So, uh, I will give you some, some example, but before that, uh, just, oh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, in DO178, in DO178B, but it is still true in DO178C, uh, this is a typical uh, way of developing uh, a software from system requirements to an executable object code. You have to develop high level requirements during your specification activity. You have a design activity with, which produces software architecture, low level requirements, and then you have a coding phase which produces source code, and you have to uh, an integration phase to produce your executable, executable object code. That is to say, from your several source code, you have to put to compile them, build the executable object code, and put it on the target. And uh, on this uh, development, you have to perform some verification activities. Here are only the activities which are required by review and analysis in the 178 core document. So you have compliance and trustability uh, at all level, except here, we will see. You have also some verification activity to do on each level of uh, data, life cycle data, accuracy, consistency, hardware compatibility, verifiability, conformance to standards, to rules, and uh, maybe uh, accuracy of the algorithms. And then you have the testing activities. The objective of testing activity is to verify the compatibility with the target, the, ex the compatibility of the executable object code with the target, and then to verify that your executable object code com is compliant and robust with the low-level requirements, is compliant and robust with the high-level requirements. That is D178B and D178C uh, verification objectives. Uh, there is not in that slide the verification of the verification, because uh, in avionics project we are a little bit masochist. And uh, so we have also to verify the life cycle data produced during the verification activity. And this is where we will find the coverage activity to verify that the, the testing activity here cover all the requirements and here also. And this is also during this verification activity of verification activity that you will have to verify the coverage of your, of your the structural coverage analysis. So, in this formal method supplement, uh, about formal verification, the supplement says that formal analysis might, re might replace review and analysis objectives. All what is in blue in the previous slide. So it says that all what is in blue could be replaced by formal analysis. For example, if your high level requirements are formally expressed, then you can use formal analysis, for example, to verify the consistency and accuracy. Maybe to verify the hardware compatibility if you have some express your interface with hardware but with properties, for example. Oh, sorry. Uh, and, and so on. But if both your high level requirements and low level requirements are expressed formally, oh, Sorry, there is a uh, You can verify, you can use here formal method to verify the compliance and the traceability of the two. This formal th supplement says, is saying also that you can use formal analysis, but formal analysis may, might replace, oh, sorry testing activity in front of high level or low level requirements and robustness tests we will see and in that case it says that the structural coverage objectives could be achieved if it can be demonstrated that each requirement is completely covered the completeness of the requirements is obtained there is no expected dependencies between output and input and there is no dead code so if you use formal method instead of, of testing, you can reach structural coverage analysis by this way. For example, 
if you have if your low level requirements are expressed formally if you have a conservative representation of your executable object code and your source code and if you use a formal method here for example caveat to verify the compliance of your source code in front of your low level requirement therefore you don't need to to test your executable object code in front of your low level requirement this is what what we did in a380 but formal method is going further by saying that formal analysis might help for verification of compatibility with the hardware for example on your executable object code you some properties might be proven directly worst case execution time stack usage you can imagine other things so you can reach some of the objectives of compatibility with target by using formal methods but what is said also in this formal method supplement is that formal analysis cannot replace hardware and software in integration tests you still need to you, t you still need to have testing activities and mostly for that to conclude uh, I would like to say that uh, static verification and formal method are cheaper we say that before industrially applic applicable now because we have more, more and more we have tools on the on the table we still have uh, we will have soon by the end of this year I hope uh, a D178C with a formal method supplement which will help to certify software using formal method instead of classical verification therefore there is no more breakers to use formal method for avionics software so let's go <coughs> and that's all no sorry <laughs> so I would like to add these things uh, I have to, to, to thank our teams inside Airbus uh, Jean Squiris and David Delmas, they are working very hard for a long time to, to, uh, to promote formal methods inside Airbus, outside Airbus, in front of certification authorities and uh, we, have, we, will, we, have seen, we have seen that this is possible and they are right. I would like also to thank Duncan Brown and Kelly Hearth we, who are the chairman of the subgroup in, uh, in the committee with, with written, uh, which is written uh, D178C. And uh, finally, Virginie Wills from ONERA, which is my personal uh, <laughs> coach in formal method because I'm not a, a, a formal method specialist. I just put formal method into a process and put that in front of certification authority and say, okay, it's possible and you can trust us. So. If you have questions, I will try to answer. Thank you.